Okay, good evening to all. Myself, Dr. Nagaraju, and today we are going to discuss about Python programming languages. Before going to this Python, and before give me one confirmation, is the screen is perfectly visible to all? Yes, sir, it's visible. Python. Okay, coming to the Python programming language. So in the first 10 minutes, I am not discussing anything about Python. First of all, why we are learning a programming language? Programming language in the sense in our point of view, either C language, Java or Python. We have three different languages, not only three. Generally, we know three languages, C, Java, Python. Generally, why we are learning Python means we will discuss after 10 minutes. First of all, what is mean by a software generally we are learning any programming language to enter into the software industry any programming language to enter into software industry first of all what is mean by a software simple definition the basic thing is software is simply a collection of programs a set of programs to do an activity for example, Redbus is a software which is used to book the tickets. IRCTC software to book the tickets, book my show, anything. We know many number of support, DMOT. They have some billing software to book the items. So now software is some set of programs to do activity. Now, generally, if anyone coming from the industry, they know two terms. One is service-based companies. Second one is product-based companies. It is in the word serviced based company and product based company one simple thing generally we are developing an application for example here i am developing one application how the application what is the meaning of application by using that application very very simple suppose a java program or else generally everyone knows c language in c language first i am writing some program executing the program we are getting some output yes or no writing the program executing the program we are getting some output that means i developed one application but where the application is executed you listen turbo c compiler one compiler is there for example i am booking some movie tickets under book my show that is my project what is my project or else amazon in the Amazon, I need to add some products to the cart and then buy the product. So, I am writing a program. How I written a program? The program is to add item to the cart and then buy the items from the cart. That is my program. Okay, very good. I written the program successfully. Everything is fine. Now, how the items are added, how they are displayed to the user, once completion how the items are delivered and software is required amazon here my pro my c program is executed by using compiler i written the program that is executed by compiler but one person is needed what is the role of that person he needs to develop the compiler yes or no now you understand the two things one is already existed is there Based on the existing, I am writing the program and use the existing one. And one person developed that thing. What is the one example? General example. So right now I am using system. Right now I am using laptop, paint software. Now I am using this paint software where in the laptop. But how the laptop is work? What is the compulsory thing? Operating system. Yes or no? Without an operating system, it is not possible. Remember, whenever you are entered into industry, two things are available. That means you are in a position to develop two types of softwares. One is system software. Second one is application software. Now you understand what is mean by application software? That means we are designing an application for my personal need, for example, DMOD, 
they designed their own application for their billing only for example some other shopping mall they designed application software for their purpose only depending upon my intention my requirement i developed an application so that is generally called as service based companies now suppose if i develop some billing software where that is executed compulsory your system needs an operating system that is called system software system software means the software that is needed for developing or for executing application software for executing application software we need some systems we need some systems yes that is system software okay now you understand two points right now you are ready for enter system software or application software depending upon your capability and our capability we can select either system or application generally 100 percent does there 90 percent moves to application only 10 percent move to only 10 percent move to system if all the 100 percent developed the system software then who use the system software general point okay right now you know the definition and again i am not coming to python before coming to python here one point software means set of programs and to do some activity how do you write the program before that what the industry follows software development life cycle here remember so the first to 15 to 20 minutes whatever we are discussing this is not related to python after 6 30 only i started the enter into python so first of all what is software development life cycle life cycle means our birth to our death simple terms birth to death whatever we are doing that is the life cycle that is in terms of software that is initiation of the software doing some things and then finally deliver the software generally what are the phases first two basic phases are right now we are not required but anyway i will write down the first one is communication. I will exp um, explain in our, our general terms, not related to any software. For example, I need a software. Suppose you are the company. I am the client. Client in the sense, customers. So I am the client. I come to you and ask, sir, I need one software. The requirements of my software is, remember one point. As I know, technical terms are not technical terms exactly generally as a client client does not know technical knowledge so whether you developed the project in java or python that is not required for me what is my requirement my software is to be executed successfully with high performance okay what is my project for example my project is book my show up to now that is not available assume sir i have a multiplex which consists of suppose six screens each day I am playing five to six shows and uh, for example depending upon the weekends or weekdays suppose weekdays I am going to play the same movie multiple screens etc etc different requirements I given that is communication first client com communicate with the com particular organization okay I gathered all your requirements generally this communication is called requirements gathering once i gather all the requirements then generally what i am doing so you said your requirements immediately what is my response immediately my response is okay sir we are doing this project general thing we are doing this project for completion of this project this many number of days required for example within one month i completed the project so immediately i should do okay within one month means uh, maximum 10 members required each member this much amount Be, suppose if you required six months or if it's completed in one month depending upon the time the amount is vary simple thing planning whether number of persons schedule or what programming language whatever it is okay these things are happened now come to our point these are not been done by the developers actually we are learning the programming language for developing now very very important 
after based uh, completion of these two things the most important thing is analysis and design remember the number of steps is not important understand the order analysis and design that means i analyze all the requirements what is to be done what are the programming language i required whatever it is everything is analyzed so theoretical manner that means this is the first step second step third step fourth step after that what is mean by design design means simply a prototype a prototype architecture right now you understand everyone constructing the houses directly they are not construct the house first they have a plan yes or no in a paper they have a plan exactly that is the prototype now once i given this prototype what is your intention after knowing the plan come to real that means construct a building develop a software that is implementation you got my point after completion of the design one prototype that is one layout i am getting that layout is to be converted into program software either program or software that is implementation after that the remaining things test the product and then deliver the product and then maintenance that is not required now converting this analysis or design into coding we need one language you understand my point converting the analysis or design into coding that is for execution we need one language so here depending upon your requirement we are selecting the language now coming to language now you understand what is the basic definition of language language means simply communication or converting that analysis into implementation we need a language generally the languages are categorized into general scenario three types what are the three exactly remember c c++ java no the languages are general categorization or mission level language assembly level language and then high level language after completion of this one observe first software how do we develop the software within that software analysis and design is converted to implementation for that i need a language in our society in the software development three languages are available by the end of this one i entered into python what are the three languages in the old days first we are using mission level language mission means my computer that means the language that is understandable by the computer mission level language means the language that is understandable by the computer okay that is understandable by the computer remember every information is in the form of zeros and ones so even though you are writing very large program the program does not consists of any letters only it consists of zeros and ones that is mission level language now by think by using this one you know what is the disadvantage in terms of users here remember everything is in point of user in my point of view it is very difficult to remember zeros and ones for example if you want to perform addition of two numbers like this 2 plus 3 in normal we are writing 2 plus 3 the answer is 5 but it is not possible to write why everything is in form of zeros and ones now today i am using this laptop right now i am using this laptop okay remember the word this laptop in this laptop two the binary representation zeros and ones is called binary term two is represented as 10 3 is represented as 11 now plus is represented as 1011 i don't know exact terms i assume 
For example, assume this is 2 is okay, 3 is okay. This is the binary of plus in my system. Okay, anyway, I buy her the thing. So, at any place plus occurs, plus is replaced with 1, 0, 1, 1, anyway, I buy her. How many instructions you will buy her? Is it possible? 100 percent is it difficult okay you have high memory anyway i will buy her all the instructions today i forgot my laptop and you are moving to another laptop to do some edition program there also i am given one zero one one zero one 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 here it does not perform edition why means again these instructions are depend on mission from mission to mission again they are changed Mission to mission again are changed. Now you understand the difficulty level. Even though you buy hard, that is suitable for only one system. That is the disadvantage of mission level language. To overcome that disadvantage, generally we are using assembly. So we are not discussing anything in assembly. Why? Because this is a completely another language. But anyway, I will give you in assembly language. Instead of using mnemonic, these two zeros and ones here, we are using mnemonics. Mnemonics in the sense instruction words. For example, add 2 comma 3. Compared to this one, this one easy or difficult? So, system 1, system 2, system 3. In any system, the name is add only. Compared to previous one, the assembly language is better one. Again, we have some problem. Generally, the problem is this is suitable for microprocessing chip level. Or right now, we don't know microprocessing. What is the problem? Add, subtraction, multiplication. Again, many number of instructions are available. Suppose come to one person, he don't know anything about programming. I given the word MUL 2 comma 3. What is the answer? Generally, he don't know anything. Generally, he don't know anything. For example, even though any person he don't know anything, I given the calculator, uh, perform multiplication of 2 into 3. He know 2 into 3. So, that means this is also failed. Why means remembering these multiple instructions is very difficult. Remembering these multiple set of instructions is very difficult. One more problem. I will discuss the problem later. Again, we are moving into high level. Finally, we ended at this one. To overcome the again, remembering multiple instructions, we are using high level. What is mean by high level? Natural language. Whatever the regular language we are using for communication, generally the programs are also written in such language. That means... To convert the analysis or design into implementation, we can use any one of the languages, either mission level language, assembly level language, high level language. That is your wish. That is your wish. But generally, we are using high level language. Why? For easy. Simply users easily understand. Users easily understand. And one last point related to these languages. Which one is the better one in system point of view? Mission or assembly or high level language? Mission. Exactly. Mission level language is the better one in terms of system. Very simple. For example, general assumption. You are understanding only Telugu language. I don't know Telugu. I don't know Telugu. I know only English. But you are understanding Telugu. Like, I am writing my program in high level language, but the computer understands mission level language. Then, what is required? One mediator or one translator is required. The purpose of translator is to convert my English into your understandable Telugu. Suppose some speeches are there. For example, assume the Prime Minister's speech. The Prime Minister's speech only in Hindi. So, coming to our Hyderabad, he don't know, uh, suppose for example, our people don't know Hindi language, they know only Telugu. Generally, what happened? Whatever the speech given by the Prime Minister, the entire content is again translated into Telugu. What is the problem here? Two times, yes or no? 
the translation time is required here what is the thing the translation time converting english into telugu or converting high level language into mission level language we need one translator along with assembly also same problem converting assembly into mission also same problem in any way what is the point translator is required now you understand what is the meaning of translator converting one language into another language remember why i am given all these thing in the sense in the interview point of view i given one question next question that is the most important question so assembler not this one assembler is a translator by seeing that name you understand used to convert assembly language into mission level language assembler is used to convert assembly language into mission level language very thing not required for me now the most important question is what are how to convert high level language into mission level language this is the very 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 important question why in the sense i will explain okay so two types of translators are required one translator name is compiler second translator name is interpreter okay two translators one is compiler second one is interpreter what is the purpose of these two both have same purpose both have same purpose the purpose is converting high level language into mission level language then what is the difference anyway previously i given one example suppose pm given a speech assume the speech consists of 10 lines for example here my speech consists of 10 lines okay total 10 lines one translator is required for converting the hindi speech into telugu speech now how the translator that is the person convert the speech two ways the first way is after completion of 10 lines in hindi by the pm the entire 10 lines at a time converted into telugu that means i written a program assume the program consists of 10 lines each line is generally called as technically instructions suppose the program consists of 10 lines of code after completion at a time all the 10 lines of high level code is converted into mission code at a time that is done by compiler what is another way of translator first he given the first line first line of the speech immediately the translator converts into telugu move back second line translate into telugu third line translate into telugu that means first first line is converted into mission language if there is no error then second line is converted if there is no error third line is converted then fourth line suppose if there is an error in the fourth line stops conversion you understand my point but coming to compiler even though we have errors we have to translate now understand this is the most important question compiler and interpreter compiler and interpreter now which one is the fast compiler or interpreter 100% compiler is fast now understand the point interpreter is the best one here my question is the compiler is the fast why because general assumption suppose speech of 10 lines for example each line takes 1 second assume each line takes 1 second after complete for completing 10 lines so total 10 lines sorry total 10 seconds okay pm completed 10 seconds now move to translator the translator again he takes 10 seconds a total of 20 seconds for example moving required 1 or 2 seconds approximately 20 to 23 seconds but here interpreter means first to first line move to translator translator convert again move to person translator now you understand 
the translation time suppose giving the mic that is also translation so the translation time is additional in interpreter compared to speed in terms of speed compiler is the best one but in terms of execution flow that is in the sense security point of view or error detection error identification interpreter is the best one generally our python uses interpreter c programming language uses compiler now i said 630 now compiler interpreter all are coming completed now you are understanding one point what is a language yes or no first i started at the software based on the software you have to select your fields you want to become either a product or service that is either application software or system software that is your wish suppose whatever you are selected everything the case is converting an analysis or layout into some coding for that we need a language three types of languages depending upon your requirement your programming you can select anything if you are interested you can select machine language also not a problem machine language high level languages are in between assembly languages generally we are not preferred to use assembly okay either machine or high level not machine also we are using high level languages only now one such high level language is python one such high level language is python okay now we entered into python obviously the first question why python anywhere you are seeing at any point obviously the first question is already c is available java is available c++ cobol many many number of languages are available now why you are coming for learning python only if you have any doubt i will clarify your doubt so many number of features are available remember suppose right now i will explain all the features of python no problem i will explain you will by heart no use generally by the end of python you how in a, you are in a position okay this is the feature for example i said python is simple and easy how can you believe i said python is simple and easy you don't know anything is by anything about python how can you believe python is a simple language or easy language now you understand my point once you are writing some set of programs and you are feeling that if it is easy if you are feeling that if it is easy then only python is very easy okay now first i will write down many differences are there first the basic i, I am writing one program for example to print welcome messages just a simple program as or no here i am printing some messages welcome move level by level at a time i am not moving for example c language why you are selecting python only because of this reason first reason c language in c language this is the way even though you don't know anything about c remaining programming languages no problem so hash include stdio.h void main here printf so here you need to write some statement suppose welcome close so one for printing just to welcome message this is the program in c language coming to java so you can write c++ anything not a problem just at least to see java python coming to java in java class sample public static void main even though you don't know anything about remaining programming languages no problem you understand the difficulty of writing the program not the syntax system dot how to dot println so the same welcome message if you are writing the program in java this is the thing now finally coming to python
completed program. See this one, this single line only specify why you are selecting Python. Understand? Only just to by using print welcome the Python is printed. Not need, no need to include the header file, no need of any main method, no need of any class, no need to use the large statement for printing. Simply print welcome the Python, the statement is printed. This is my first need. So because of this reason, I am using Python. Here what is my future? Python is simple. Now observe, here if you want to learn C programming language, you need to remember this one. Java, you need to remember this one. But Python, if you remember only this single word, it is very easy. Even though for printing means you are using the keyword general English meaning print. So one advantage why we are using Python. Because of this only, not we are not selecting Python. Remember, because of simple only, we are not selecting the Python. Why again? Why we are selecting the Python? The main thing, second one is applications. Applications. That means in what areas we are using Python? What are the different applications? You can write in I will give it. So one application, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Simply, you are used in A to Z. You can take any application, your wish, any stream, any domain, any application. For example, desktop application. What is mean by desktop application? Suppose a software that is designed and installed in a system. For example, VLC media player. For example, VLC media player is installed in my system. So I click on play some music videos, etc, etc. That is desktop application. For example, for playing VLC, you require any internet? No. That means without any requirement, simply a software that is installed in a system. Any type of such softwares are developed by using Python, not only VLC. Any type of desktop applications are developed by using Python. Web application. What is mean by web application? Any application that requires internet. For example, Facebook. Is whether the Facebook is implemented by Python or not Python, that is not the question. So we are implementing the Facebook by using Python, it is possible. Red bus, book my show, IRCTC. That means by using Python, you can develop any type of web application. Okay. So generally these two points, whenever suppose if I am the Java trainer, actually I am the Java trainer also. The same points I given in the Java demo. In the Java demo also I given the same point. Java is used for developing desktop application. Java is used for developing web application. I given the two points in both. But what is the additional? Here this additional is generally this Python is used for developing machine learning applications, artificial intelligence, deep learning, data science, IoT. It is in the words machine learning commonly known as right now you are using artificial intelligence, the most popular one. For artificial intelligence only, this Python becomes very, very popular. Artificial, sir, why Java is not preferred? Yes, even Java is also preferred. But for example, 100 organizations are developing an artificial intelligence. 99 companies uses Python. Only one company preferred use Java. Why Python only? Again. Why all the companies uses Python only in the sense the Python have a rich set of predefined modules. Predefined modules. What is mean by this one? Uh, for our own understanding purpose, suppose I given some white paper to you, fill all your details. I given white paper to you, fill all your details. I given 2 minutes of time or suppose I given 5 minutes of time <coughs> at the time of filling suppose I am filling the application like this my first name middle name last name Azu, 
educational qualifications suppose any training experience experience so any projects etc etc okay i forgot to give my phone number and mail id generally you are also doing the same thing or in a different fashion 100% in a different fashion yes or no so i am following the first name middle name last name you do not require middle name generally i am given one voice only name nagaraju name completed name t nagaraju completed i over suppose next you are given your mail id your phone number the order is same or different 100% the order is different 100% the order is different for example i given a template to you i given an application form to you an application form clearly consists of name colon age colon phone number colon now it simplifies the process or not you no need to think yourself which is to be filled so name is included or not included phone number included or not included you don't need to remember name write down your name phone number write down your phone number that means it is existed existed now another important thing is i already completed my application form suppose uh, application form is completed uh, i need the application one more time in another organization also i am using the same application generally same application generally what we are doing are not all our application suppose ssc certificate 10th class certificate for every company you are right you are not writing one more 10th class already one time only we are writing the 10th class and we take the multiple copies of xerox multiple xerox copies whenever you request simply you submit that means already the lot of code is completed already the lot of code is already completed and defined placed at some place placed at somewhere what is your task is simply go to that place bring that one and use bring that one suppose right now you are going to home your food is already prepared your food is already prepared what is your task go to the kitchen and take the food and then eat exactly paitha everything 95% 90 not 95% 100% everything is already defined what is your aim is what are the things that are already defined directly you are going to the kitchen and check what are the items of today yes or no we are checking if this is the item simply go to the software how to go means i will show you whenever we are move on i will show you go to the python okay this is existed simply use that one for example i want to do machine learning project i want to do a machine learning project in java minimum it requires 1000 lines of code assume it requires thousand lines of code suppose if you are writing the same program in python maximum it requires only 20 lines of code thousand where is thousand where is 20 20 lines of code why i am confidently speaking me actually in the starting i said i am dr nagaraju yes or no doctor in the sense phd so i completed my phd under michel learning so in the year 2015 First 2015 means approximately 7 years back. First I am trying to use Java programming. But at the time of doing the project it requires lot of lines. Immediately Python comes into existence. It reduces the button. Exactly. That is the main main application. Why you are selecting Python in the sense. All machine learning data science applications. We are using Python. We are using Python. This is another region. Many regions are available. Now, the remaining, now, another application, audio and video games. Audio, video games, that is animations. In animations, you are using Python. What not, in any way, we are using Python. Simple term. In any situation, you are using Python. These are my two points. Remember, not only these two points, these two points are you are easy to understand. For example, previous point is whenever I written the program, you understand Python is simple. Here I am using the word in each and every application, Python is useful. You can understand that is fine. Now, the remaining thing is why we are using Python is whenever we entered into the language, for example, data type, one concept, the most popular concept in any programming language. 
so if you are using c c plus plus java you need to declare the data type but in python no need to declare right now i am explaining this point are you understand right now if anybody know c c plus plus java if anybody know at least one programming language they don't understand but remember here what is my intention is how i deliver the lecture means you don't know anything my intention is you don't know anything so don't know means in the sense you don't know c language you don't know c plus plus you don't know completely you are belongs to a non it stream a non it background so python is the beginner language remember so compared to remaining programming languages it is very easy to learn python it is very easy to learn python anyway we are moving at least to four to five sessions after completion of four to five sessions minimum then only you will agree okay sir python is a very easy language no problem so this is the application now any doubts before this one before closing this one here we are learning python in two aspects what are the two aspects python is in terms of procedure oriented python is implemented in terms of object oriented okay this is one more why why we are using python this is one more for example c is the procedure oriented language what is the procedure what is object i explain whenever i entered into the subject i will explain the concept right now i am not entered any, into any subject so c language supports procedure oriented concepts okay that means c is almost the best one yes or no so procedure oriented means they have some advantages now they have some disadvantages also some advantages are there some disadvantages are there to overcome that one java is also developed java is a completely object oriented program now here the python uses both the procedure oriented and object oriented now compared to c java this is better yes or no c supports only procedure java supports only object oriented but python supports both procedure oriented and object oriented that means if you learn python means it is very easy to move to c it is very easy to move to java now remember in our curriculum i will cover both procedure oriented after completion of entire procedure oriented i will move to object oriented along with so i think you have the syllabus copy that is content we discussed the modules this is important this is important and we also discuss here i am giving the only main points database why this database this is the very 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 important one so the very important thing is database generally by using normal procedure that is a normal some core python we are in a position to write the programs we are in a position to write the programs for example simply understand one database is created for example in your college some student database is created by using databases what are the databases either mysql or sql mango db different oracle different databases are available we are storing some data total 1000 student information is stored in your database now my aim is among 1000 students i want only the students whose percentage is greater than 80 now blindly i am not going to check each and every record from the python program only i am not moving to database from the program i interacted directly to the database whenever i execute the python program i am getting the result now you understand my point here i am not going to the database from the program only how to store the data into the database perform the operations any type of operations so this is very important why this is very important means generally this whenever you are knowing the concept of database then only you are in a position to do the projects yes or no 
so program is different to project program means single program store execute completed it do some activity project means generally multiple programs are clubbed together okay anyway we are discussing how to connect to the database and perform the operations on the database along with many topics are there anyway i think you have the syllabus copy if you don't have no problem i will share the content right now so any doubts so today is the day one session i am not closing up to 7 o'clock if you have any doubts you can ask me this 10 minutes i doubts either you can unmute yourself fast the doubt or chat that is ping the message you also any doubts is it the company still use java company still using java 100% why don't they still like move to python yet is there an advantage ah exactly same advantage even though companies prefer to use java but why the advantage of python is nowadays everything is become artificial that is a a is implemented directly by using python why because for implementing any a projects even chatbot nowadays the chatbot is also developed by using python why because in python all the modules are already existed you no need to write the entire logic multiple number of lines if it is already existed simply use the word if you are using the word the number of lines are reduced automatically error detection for example if you are writing one more time means there is a chance of error already everything is existed means we are simply using that one we are getting less number of errors that is the one advantage that is the reason most of the companies prefer python but here i am teaching python in the sense of python is the not only the best one remember along with python java is a 100% java is also good one there have their own advantages disadvantages what are the this is here i am teaching only the advantages of python in among artificial intelligence generally in security point of view java is also preferable to be frankly in security point of view internet programming generally java is a preferable programming language in artificial intelligence programming point of view python is a preferable one yes any others yeah hi sir hello hello any doubt from scratch hello sir so first you need to learn python remember the basic things so what is the procedure means first you need to learn python okay after completion of the python you have to select the domain remember here many things are there one is if you want to become a full stack developer that is one field full stack developer is one field what is full stack developer you know the meaning full stack means you only write the program you are testing the program you are storing the program simple thing everything is done by you for example user interface created by you so program written by you store in the infra data that is written by you testing written by you everything is done by you only that is full stack developer generally what is the procedure first after learning the core python next you need to learn advanced advanced in the sense anyone know the term django so generally framework after learning this core python you need to learn django that means you are in a position along with django if you are learning django in the sense parallelly you need to learn any front end simple thing either html javascript css all those things along with django now you are in a position to use the framework you are in a position to use the framework okay after completion of this one after completion of django if you are learning testing along with database that means python django testing database four are completed you are become the full stack developer that is one area second area is after completion of python this after completion of this core python now if you want to move into machine learning domain now select the modules for example numpy pandas 
matte plot leaf, cycad lens, sci-fi, some modules are available. So, you will have to go machine learning. Now, these design go, all those are not required. Database testings, all those are not required. You will move to machine learning or you will move to data science or you will move to IoT or cyber security or networking, anything or audio video or CAD applications. That means if you want to move any domain, the basic thing is Python. Why? Without knowing the syntax, basic thing, without knowing the data type, without knowing the variable, you will don't know anything. We don't know anything. Yes or no? So here one student asked the question deployment. Simply deployment in the sense after implementation, in the simple sense my project is completed. That means I am doing my testing also. After completion of the testing, project is executed successfully. Deliver the project to the client. Deliver the project to the client. So that is called after delivering the project. So generally maintenance is also there. Maintenance in the sense simple thing warranty. So up to six months I give in the maintenance. That is any problems are there. Not six months depending on the project. I give in the maintenance. That is the final step is deploy the project to the client. That is called deployment. After completion, you have to select your own domain. That is your wish. Depending upon the whom you will select. But for anything, the basic thing is you need to learn this core Python. Any doubts? Anyway, daily within the class only, I am asking the doubts. If you have any doubt, you any, at any point of time, generally, you can unmute or ping the message. You can unmute yourself and ask the doubts or directly ping the message in the chat box. Clear the today session. So today just I entered into why Python only. Why Python? Directly I not entered. Before, before that, what is a Python? What is a Python? It is a language. What is a language? What are the types of languages? Why the languages are coming? So where the languages are coming? Reverse direction. Software, uh, SDLC, Software Development Life Cycle from the language Mishanu Assembly High Level. High level language, one is Python. Why Python means these are the three definitions. Now, if you are clear, I will close the session. If you have any doubt, you can unmute yourself and ask the doubts. So, before going to the today's session, first of what we have discussed in the last session. So, in the last session, first I give a brief introduction of what is a software? Just the basic things. I just entered into Python in the last session. What is mean by a software? What is mean by a software? Simply collection of programs to do some activity. Different types of softwares, application software and system software. After completion of this definition, software development life cycle. How do we develop a software starting from gathering of the requirements to deploy the project in between all the things are not required for us. What is the required converting the analysis or design into program for that we need a language for that we need a language. Okay, so three types of languages mission level language. Assembly level language, high level language. We discussed what are the three types of languages, what is the difference among the languages, what is the advantage of one language over another languages and also we discussed the main important point, compiler and interpreter, compiler and interpreter which are used to convert high level language into mission level language. After completion of all these basic things, here we are using high level language. One such language is Python. You have any different languages, even Java is also available. Many languages are available. Here we are selecting Python. Obviously, our question is why we are using Python only? Why you are using Python only? I give the difference. For example, in the first scenario, size of the program. Suppose if you want to write a program, 
consider the previous example i am printing some message welcome so the same message is printed by using c program java and python compare the simplicity of the programming language this is one aspect second one is applications vast areas are covered by python this is another one and python suppose both procedure oriented and object oriented both procedure oriented and object oriented this is another scenario that means different scenarios why we are using python okay these are the things that we had discussed in the last session just to why python now today i will enter into python programming i entered into python programming okay before entering into python programming so what is the first step i want to write some program suppose to perform addition of two numbers how where we are writing the program general common point for example i given you some on calculator within the calculator you are performing some addition in the java you are writing some notepad and execute by using jdk similarly python also required some software for executing the python programs yes or no any programming languages any programming languages required some software for executing a program for executing python program i am using one software that is one tool idle idle is the tool which is used to execute python program now today our first step is what is idle how to install idle in your system what is idle how to install idle in your system and how to write the programs by using idle understand the point now so the first thing is simply go to any web browser your wish you can select any web browser official website python dot o r g remember python dot o r g this is the official website from this website only you have to download press enter okay so this is the home page whenever you are moving into python dot o r g this home page now see here we have one option download is available no need to click simply place the cursor on the download it is the screen is available now depending upon your operating system suppose if you are using windows select windows mac os select mac os or any other operating system so i think most of members using windows operating system if you want procedure is same procedure is same for example under windows see this one by default it shows windows operating system version by default you no need to select any one see this one python 3.11.3 so this is the latest version of python available sir i am not interested to do latest version i need suppose python 3.10 for example now simply click on windows click on windows now see this one different versions are available even python 3.12 april 4 approximately yesterday so pre release that is it is almost for release now if you want anything for example python 3.12 suppose python 3.11.1 released under december 6 python 3.10.9 think you understand click on anything your wish if you want you click on anything sir i am not interested generally always prefer the latest version you know that what the latest version support all the things click automatically one downloader is installed right now in my system idle is available if i am trying to install it is not possible 
what is the next step anyway i will explain the next step concentrate click on this installer once you click on this installer one page is open here you no need to do anything next 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 to finish close you no need to do anything you no need to change anything simply click on next to next to three to four times first time they are asking yes or no first to click on yes next to next to next to automatically the python ideally is installed no problem very very simple within one minute less than one minute ideally is installed even though if i am installing some of the programs are already written in this end so i lost all the programs if i try to install one more time that is the reason only i am not installing anyway at the time of installation if you have any doubt i will explain now okay python is installed successfully now where it is available obviously next question installation is done successfully where it is available how to open and how to write the program go to start go to start click on this one here type ideally you need to type i d l e automatically by typing id only it is place type ideally see this one ideally python 3.11 this shell simply double click on this one or single click whatever it is click on this one automatically ideally shell is opened up to now any doubt now up to now what i am doing why because this is the first step without knowing this step all the remaining classes are waste yes or no first step go to the official website python.org under home downloads option according to your operating system download in all the operating system simple procedure is next to next to after that go to start and then type ideally go to start and then type ideally okay ideally under start now this screen is open now you are ready for writing a program okay right now i am not writing any program i open ideally remember in python we have two modes not in python actually the ideally ideally means the place where we are executing the python obviously there are two modes of python program execution the two modes are one is interactive mode one is interactive mode second one is script mode these are the two modes for writing a python program depending upon your requirement you can select any mode you can select either interactive mode or if you want you can select script mode that is your wish either interactive mode or script mode you can select anything now what is the interactive the name specified interactive we are directly interact with the we are directly interact with the shell suppose open this one here i am typing like calculator 2 plus 3 suppose if anybody know c language suppose c c++ java except python in remaining programming languages for example general scenario is generally if you are using c language you are writing a program and if you alt f9 suppose turbo c control f9 that is compilation and running the program and another screen is open within that screen the output is displayed i am writing the program at one place the output is automatically moved to in another place but here in python see this one 2 plus 3 this is my input yes or no press enter i am getting the output now you understand the point interactive that is the user directly interact with the shell i think you know the meaning of shells shell meaning is general meaning not technical general meaning is the place where we are running the program 
that is generally called a shell. The user directly interact with the shell. Suppose generally why we are, uh, in what situation we are preferred to use this interactive mode? General situation is if your program consists of one line of code. Understand? One thing. Suppose if you want to write a program, it consists of five lines. Generally what we are writing? First to write the first line. After completion, after completion, you have to press enter. Yes or no? Generally for move to the next line, enter. Second line, enter. Third line. But in interactive mode, whenever I press enter, suppose general thing, 5 plus 6, observe the triple greater than symbol. Triple greater than, that means that at that position only you need to write the statement. You press enter, automatically the result. For single line of statements, we are preferred to use this interactive mode. Even though you can run multiple lines, not a problem. Anyway, whenever we are moving to the programming, I will explain. But generally, suppose auto, if your program size is more than one line. What is the next choice? Script. I think you know the meaning of script. Script means simply a program. Script means simply some set of statements. How do you write the program? See this one. This is very important. File. Click on file. New file. Here you have to write the program. For example, you don't know any syntaxes. Ignore that one. Right now you don't know. Assume this is a Python program. Assume this is a Python program. Now what I written? Simply, I open a new file. Within the new file, I written some script. Then before execution, what you need to do? Anything, save, any programming languages. Before execution, you need to save. How to save? Simply control S or else file, save. You can use anything. Save. Now, see the path. So, by default, that path is selected. What is that path? I will show you manually. Go to my computer. That is this PC. C drive. Users. My system name. And then, actually in your system, the app data folder is not visible to you. That is a hide folder. App data under this local Programs. Now by seeing this word you understand what is that one? By default your python software is installed at that position. See this one? Python. Python 3.11. By default your python software is installed at this position. You understand? So whatever the program you are trying to save. By default they are saved in the same location. If you want to change, you know that one, yes or no? By selecting, suppose I want to save in Nagaraju folder, click on that one, save. If you want to change, you can save. Now, file name, you can give any name. For example, my file name is, uh, uh, what is my thing? First to program. Assume this is my first to program. Actually, this is what type of file? Python file. Remember, Every python file is saved as file name dot py dot py specifies this is a python file this is a python file but remember clear but remember in this example you no need to view even though you are given dot py not a problem even though you are given dot py not a problem even though you are not given the dot p why not a problem you can give or not give why means save as a type see this one python file why because i opened from ideally here i am not to open the notepad you understand my point i am not to open the notepad anyway we will show you how to execute the programs under notepad here you directly open the program by using ideally automatically every file is a python file now save 
okay my program is saved successfully click on run next step is click on run click on run run module run module what is the term module in the last session i used one word many predefined modules are available many predefined modules that means module me simply a program simply a python file a script file which consists of lot of information click on this one directly whenever you click on this one you automatically move to the interactive mode in the interactive mode i got the output 2 plus 3 that is 5 now you understand in the script mode we are writing the program after execution we transfer back to the interactive mode in the interactive mode the output is displayed in the interactive mode the output is displayed now my first concept is completed any doubt what is my first step after knowing the basic things in the next last session here i entered into python under that first two one is IDLE installation. After installation of IDLE, you have to write the program. Now, for writing the program, there are two modes. One is interactive mode and one other one is script mode. You can select any one depending upon your wish. You can select any one. Okay. Right now, I am ready for writing the program. Okay. Now, how to write the program obviously that is the next concept what are the syntaxes what are the commands what are the structure we have to follow so you need to know many number of things you need to know many number of things okay level by level again i will repeat approximately after completion of three to four sessions only you understand what is a program if you don't know anything, suppose if you don't know any programming languages, wait for minimum 3 to 4 sessions. After completion of 3 to 4 sessions only, then you will understand what is what. Suppose if you know any other language, any other language, then you will understand what is mean by program. Okay. Anyway, my first topic is, first topic is, that is, for writing the program, installation is completed, that is a separate task. For writing the program, we need to learn many concepts, the basic and the most important. Identifier, from now onwards, follow carefully. Identifier, first I will give you the meaning, then you will understand the complete thing. Identifier is simply a name. Identifier is simply a name. What is the meaning of a name? In a program, suppose you are writing the program. For example, see this one. Here, even though you don't know anything, A is equal to 2. By seeing that one, you are understanding one point. A consists of a value 2. What is A? You don't know. Assume A consists of a value 2 b consists of a value 3 suppose a plus b means the value present in a plus the value present in b addition is performed a general scenario now how we are using the name a how you are using the name b generally a and b are called variable that is our next topic so you need to know one word variable now you understand what is a variable? Variable is used to hold some value. Yes or no? Variable is used to hold some value. One topic is no. Now coming to object oriented programming. In the last class I used two words. You don't know the meaning. Just two words. One is a procedure oriented. Next one is object oriented. Under object oriented you have the concept of class. For a class, you need to give a class name, object, you need to give a name, method, you need to give a name, function, a name, variable, a name, constant, a name. So, whatever you are using in a program, 
each and everything you need to give some name in the very very simple sense i have one name you also have a name you also have a name everybody consists of some name generally what is identifier identifier is a name given to variables functions classes objects that are used in the program that means a program can use different types of concepts okay here just now remember only the word name what is the important what are the rules to be followed here i given the variable a that is correct b that is correct then only the program is executed successfully there is no problem now what are the rules to be followed now you understand what are the rules means for giving a name you have to follow some rules okay okay for simplicity for your understanding so my parents given a name to me yes or no that is identifier my parents or is followed any rules or not for given a name to me my parents followed some rules generally you know that one what are the rules based on date of time date of birth date time so based on the star at the birth time so for example this is the star the name starts with this letter this is the star the name starts with this letter yes or no i think all of 90% all the parents follow some rules for given the name exactly for given the names to either a variable classes objects functions we also have to follow some rules compulsory you need to follow suppose even though your name starts with n so if you suppose your name starts with n i starts with s yes, there is no problem for the person but this is a program program is executed the mission mission everything is fixed you have to follow compulsory what are the rules first one a name consists of alphabets i think what is the most important topic this is yes or no without knowing this topic that means without knowing abc we are enter into wars so a name consists of alphabets alphabets in the sense you know a to z or capital a to capital z remember both are different small lower case letters and upper case letters both are different now a name consists of alphabets either lower case or upper case i will show you this one right now suppose see this one here i am using capital b save control s save execute see this one we are getting an error yes or no name b is not defined why here i am using small b here capital b now you understand lower case letters are different from upper case letters now a name consists of alphabets fine now a name consists of digits so digits in the sense any digit combination from 0 to 9 either 11 12 13 25 234 20, 20, whatever it is it consists of a combination of digits 0 to 9 and the most important one is only one special character only one special character that is underscore suppose if you are seeing your keyboard you have many special character see this one not symbol question mark star at the rate dollar percentage power symbol ampersand many symbols are available so brackets parentheses all those are not allowed for given a name only the special character allowed is underscore so alphabets are allowed digits are allowed and underscore are allowed only these three combinations are allowed in your name but minimum one alphabet is compulsory one alphabet is compulsory for given a name now the important thing is suppose these contains does not 
Suppose I given a name. The name does not starts with DG. The name does not starts with a digit. The name must and should starts with either alphabet or underscore only. For example, see this one. I am going to this ID only. A is equal to some five. Press enter. It does not give any problem. That means that is correct. Yes or no? So it does not give any problem. Is a is equal to five is the valid statement. A is equal to five is the valid statement. Now a b c is equal to twenty. A b c means how many? One or three? No, remember a b c is a single variable. A b c is a single variable, single name. Anyway, we will understand. Remember, more than one name means they are separated by commas. If you have more than one name means they are separated by comma. Here A B C, this is a single name. Okay, press enter. Does not give any error. That means this is also a valid name. Here I am checking whether names are valid or invalid. For example, A one two is equal to some forty. Now A one two is a val is equal to twenty five or ten whatever it is. Ignore the right side part. Observe only left side. Here the left side is A. This is a valid name. A B C. This is also a valid name. A one two. Now is this valid or invalid? A one two is also a valid statement. Exactly. A one two is a valid statement. Now A underscore one is equal to some fifty. Valid or invalid? Why? Special character or underscore? I already written the point. See this one. Only one special character underscore is allowed. Only one special character underscore is allowed. Okay. Where is this one? Yes, see this one. So underscore is allowed. Come hundred percent. That is valid. Only underscore. For example, a dollar is equal to some twenty. Now it gives an error. See this one? Invalid. Understand? Only underscore is allowed. Except to underscore, the remaining things are not allowed. Except underscore, the remaining special characters are not allowed. Now, I used one word. What is the word? Does not starts with a digit. For example. If I starts with a digit, one a is equal to some thirty. Exactly, this is also an invalid statement. Now, underscore a is equal to thirty. Valid or invalid? Valid. I used only the word does not starts with a digit. The meaning is. It can starts with alphabet, or it can starts with underscore. Starts with alphabet, starts with underscore. Now that is perfectly valid. My final point is underscore one is equal to some thirty. Valid or invalid? Valid. Valid. Why invalid? Starts with underscore. Now you understand the point. Simply identifier S. If you have any doubt, you can unmute yourself and ask the doubts. Not a problem. At any point of time, if you have doubt, you can ask me. So one question for the MacBook, which tool should I use to write the code as Notepad is not present in MacBook? Yes. Sir. So no need to use the Note uh, Note Notepad directly by using IDE only. We can write the program. Ideally, only you can write the program. Yes. Okay. 
Anyway, if you have any doubt related to MacBook, I will explain. No problem. Now, you understand? This is the basic thing. Why? If you want to write any program without this concept, without this concept, it is not possible to move even single step also. Even minimum, minimum simple program is addition of two numbers. For that program also, you need to know know the concept of identifier okay alphabets digits underscore the most important does not start with a digit one important point two points are there first i will give you one point is there is no limit on length of identifier what is mean by this one see this example here the length is length means the number here one here 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2. You can use like this also. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N is equal to 30. Executed. You understand? There is generally no limit on the length. Why we are using this word in the sense? Except to Python in the remaining programming languages, the length of a name that is identifier is fixed you have to use a maximum this many number of characters only but python there is no limit even though there is no limit so are you using this keyword suppose sorry are you using this variable for storing any value generally we are not prefer to use according to the program you are using the variable depending on the requirement depending upon the program you are using the variable anyway there is no limit. Okay. Now, the last point. Before going to the next topic, in the identifier, we have one point is there. What is the point? An identifier is not a keyword. An identifier is not a keyword. That means keywords are not used as identifier that means keywords are not used as variable names not used as method names not used as function names not used as class names not used as object name keywords are not used as any name what is mean by keyword obviously that is my next topic yes or no you know keywords are not used what is my next topic what is mean by keyword simply the meaning of keyword is keyword is called a reserved word reserved word you know the term reserved that means at the time of a programming language development not only python for any program language development some words are reserved for some meaning suppose this is the word this word is reserved for some meaning so such words are used only for that purpose only only for that purpose suppose i written one program what is the program print a plus b print is predefined keyword so the purpose is fixed which is used to print the value such words are called keywords now you understand Keywords means the words that are reserved for some specific meaning. For example, for, this is a keyword which is used for repetition. If, if is a keyword which is used for checking the condition. Else is a keyword. Like this, you have a total of 33 keywords available in Python. Reserved words. Keywords are reserved words. Both the meaning is same. In Python, you have a total of 33 keywords are available. Now, what are these 33 keywords? Anyway, you no need to remember. You no need to remember. Whenever you are moving to the programming, automatically you will understand. Automatically you understand. Okay, this is the keyword. This is not the keyword. This is the keyword. This is the not the keyword. Okay. Now, 33 keywords anyway right now i will show you the keywords before moving to the next topic in the last session i forgot to share one information to this python programming 
every day we are providing this documents also documents in the sense today this topic that is from monday onwards so for these three days actually demo sessions anyway for the demo sessions also i we will share all the three contents also we will share from monday onwards the group is finalized that is a whatsapp group is created with the members who paid the fee whatsapp group is created anyway daily after completion of the class we will share the content content in the sense i already opened for your understanding purpose suppose this is the content today i am going to cover this topic identifier okay so identifier keywords whatever i covered ideally installation whatever i covered this is the today information i will share all this information like this document is provided daily and at the same time recorded videos i think you know all the information you know all the information recorded videos are also provided and you have an access of four months you can access the recorded videos from today onwards not today from yesterday onwards whatever it is one day at one day no problem so we have an access of four months for this recorded videos for this recorded videos no it is not possible to download so the recorded videos are only for viewable purpose only okay you are not unable to edit the record you are unable to download only you can view up to four months but anyway the documents are available generally even though the documents are available daily you can download the document and share your in your personal system in the future it is very useful along with the documents so the documents consists of generally this is the document for example see this one the document generally consists of some theoretical information along with the document so today i completed a program on this one so i will share this program also for example i will show you um, for example this is one batch see this one day 12 python file so whatever the program we have completed we will share that python suppose encapsulation exception functions so every day along with the document document we will provide whatever we are doing in the class exactly the same file is shared to you for your practice purpose only for today yesterday and day after tomorrow this is a demo session actually there is no content you are right now you are don't know how to write a program also yes or no we don't know how to write a program now clear the point clear everyone i think clear yes i got one message voice muted by you no most of the members my voice is audible in between your audio is not clear your audio sometimes it is getting destroyed okay so i resolve the issue anyway i will check one more time okay i will check one more time i will resolve the issues now one basic introduction is completed okay enter into the next level enter into the next level the next level is this is a combination topic the topic is data type and then variable which one is first data type or variable we don't know without knowing data type it is not possible to understand the variable without knowing variable not possible to understand the concept of data type okay anyway by combining these two i will explain first of all what is mean by variable remember what is mean by variable a variable is a memory location what is mean by memory location simply each and every person have some home within that address the person is available similarly in the previous program i used one statement 
a is equal to 2. In this line, a is called a variable. A is called a variable. The variable consists of some value 2. Where the 2 is stored? In some memory, each and everything that is executed in your system. It has some memory. So, a variable is a memory location to hold the value. A variable is a memory location to hold the value. For example, if I am using the statement a is equal to 2. If this statement is executed, internally what happened? Inside the system, some memory is created. Assume the box is memory. Just assume the box is memory. Inside the system, some memory is created with some address. For example, 1000 is some address. Each and everything some address. Yes or no? Your house number is an address. Like this, this portion has also some address. Now, who refer this address? A. Yes or no? A refers this address. What is the value present in that one? 2. This is the internal representation. Whenever you are using a statement A is equal to 2, automatically some memory is created with some address. That memory is referred by the variable. Within that memory, my value is stored. For example, I am writing one more statement. B is equal to 3. What happened? The same concept. Now, with it, this is referred by B. Assume some it has some address 1500, whatever it is. Now, within this address, the value B is stored. Within this address, the value B is stored. You understand? Variable is a memory location which is used to hold some value. Now, coming to the previous program, what is the program? A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3. After that, you are performing, suppose C is equal to A plus B. Now, you understand what happened? First, this statement is executed. Whenever this statement is executed, some memory is created. The reference is A. Within that one, a value 2 is stored. A value 2 is stored. After that, another memory is created with some address. And the value B, within that B. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Within that B, the value 3 is stored. Clear? Now, what is A plus B? And everyone know the basic is equal to. The right side is assigned to left side. Yes or no? General basic thing. The right side is assigned to left side. Now what happened? First, A plus B addition is performed. Here the meaning is A plus B means not A plus B. The value present in A plus the value present in B. Now here what is the meaning you need to know? Whenever you are using a variable name means automatically the value. You are using a name in the sense the value in the name. So A consists of a value 2 plus B consists of a value 3, 3, 2 plus 3, 5. Addition is performed. This is the internal statement. C is equal to 5. Obviously, another memory is created. C with some address. Within that one, the value 5 is stored. This is the program. Now, you understand the point? Variable name in the sense, not the name, the value present. The value present. Now, one point is clear. What is a variable? A variable is a memory location which is used to hold multiple values. Sorry, sorry. Which is used to hold a single value. Which is used to hold a single value. Right now, even multiple is also possible. Right now, ignore that one. So, after completion of some sessions, I will show you. So, right now, 
only definition is it hold only one value now go to this ideally go to this ideally i will show you a is equal to some three a variable is created successfully a if you print here directly if you are writing the variable name what is the output the value present remember in the script mode you need to write print of a in the interactive mode directly you can write a so anyway you will understand now b is equal to some 6 b c is equal to a plus b c same program as or no the value in a addition with the value in b stored in c now this is clear this is clear this is clear are you clear this one addresses no no means here i used the terms manually for example see this one if i am writing a is equal to 2 b is equal to 3 c is equal to a plus b so whatever the values performed successfully what are the addresses in which location a is stored i want the memory also here i roughly used the letter that is address 1000 2000 3000 here in python you have a function id remember id is a predefined what is a from now onwards you are using the term predefined predefined that means that are already defined suppose print hello how the system know to print the value previously i written the program what is that one print a plus b how the system know to print the value the print function is already defined whatever you are written inside the print statement that is printed similarly id is a function which is a predefined function which returns the address which returns the address suppose id of a it returns the address of a that is at which location the variable a is stored see this one id of a press enter so this is the address generally not 1000 2000 system point of view at this particular location the variable a is stored id of b same address or different address exactly different address see this one in this location the b is stored id of c in this location c is stored now you understand so what is a variable variable holds some value each and every variable have some address how do you identify the address by using the function id we are identifying the address of a variable now up to now it is clear so up to now identifier keyword installation just to entered into the main thing variable here under this variable i will give you two more points one point is for example this is clear one variable how many values one value single variable single value for example sir a my have three values suppose a b c in my program in my program i want to use three variables the three variables are a b c for example a value is equal to 2 b value is equal to 2 c value is also 2 for example assume all the three variables have same value then how to assign remember one technical word initialize remember the word initialize initialize means assigning a value so a is equal to 3 the meaning is we are assigning a value 3 to the variable a a value 3 
to the variable a this is called initialization you understand initialization means assigning a value now here how many statements you need to write three variables first to a is equal to 2 next to b is equal to 2 next to c is equal to 2 but all the three variables have the same value yes or no all the three variables have same value in that situation you can assign a same value to multiple variables you can assign a same value same value to multiple variables in a single line instead of using three lines you can use a single line like this a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to 2 internally what happened already i said one point right side value is assigned to left side now what is the first statement executed no first this is executed right side is equal to means right side is executed now 2 is assigned to c now what is the value of c before explaining this one a is equal to 3 b is equal to a now what is the value of a 3 what is the value of b 3 that means the value in a assigned to b exactly 2 is assigned to c the value of c is 2 that is assigned to b the value of b is 2 that is assigned to a you understand that means same value multiple variables no need to use a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to 2 a b c now obviously what is the next question multiple variables different values yes or no multiple variables different values suppose a is equal to 2 first line b is equal to 3 c is equal to 4 except to python in the remaining programming languages generally you need to write three lines but python have an advantage no need to write all the variables in three multiple number of lines you can separate it by using comma like this a comma b comma c is equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4 you understand that means multiple variables multiple values in the given order the values are assigned in the given order 2 is assigned to A, 3 is assigned to B, 4 is assigned to C. Now, I will show you A comma B comma C is equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4. A value 2, B value 3, C value 4. Now, you agree? Multiple values assigned to multiple variables. Values, variables. Now, clear. The introduction of variable is clear, but before going to the next one, I will give you one point. A comma B comma C is equal to some two comma three. What is the value of A? Two. What is the value of B? Three. Now, what is the value of C? Exactly. Remember, left to side you have three variables. Compulsory, you need to give three values. Yes or no? You have three variables. Means three values. Suppose four members are available. I given only three chairs. You understand the point? Same logic. Three memory locations, but two values. Error or not? Error. Not enough values. How many I expected? Three. But I got two. Exactly. What is the reverse one? A comma B is equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4. Now, is it possible or not possible? Exactly. Left to side I have two variables, but I have three values. See this one? Too many values. Understand the type of error anyway. 
you have to know you are getting two errors one is value error another one is name error syntax error anyway in the next session i will show you the errors also step by step now first to read the error not enough values to unpack not enough that means i need three but i have only two here i need only two but i have many that means too many values to unpack now you understand the point you understand the point now this is the concept of variable anyway by knowing the data type again i come back to the variable i already used the word both are combined together so in the next session i move to the data type along with data type again i will cover the variable also variable also here the main important thing is identifier is the main important thing everyone must and should know what is an identifier what are the rules to be followed for giving a name why because now you understand why you are following some rules if you are not following some rules even you are not allowed to write a single program also why a variable you need a name a method whatever it is you need a name you need a name and i used one word keywords are not used as a name for example id is equal to some three how is id is a key if you are using brackets that is a predefined understand the term for example for is equal to four it gives an error for is the keyword for is the keyword now anyway these are the 33 keywords you don't know how to get the keyword if you want to know this you need to learn one statement import right now you are knowing the import no whenever i am moving to the concept of import again i will show how to get all these keywords from the system that is from the ideally okay right now you don't know anything that is the reason just i will show you in the notepad end as not to whatever it is etc etc 33 keywords actually those are functions remember if anything followed by this parenthesis that is called function keyword is different to function keyword is different to function now any doubts any doubts any doubt no problem anyway i already said the video recorded is up to four months after completion of all this finalization of the group daily we will share the content along with the file that is what are the things we practice in the session we will share that file also now anything any doubts you can ask me you can unmute yourself or ping the message your wish continue in the next session good evening to all we'll start the session so in the last session we are under the topic of data types okay first of all what is data type simply the type of information stored under a variable and we discussed numbers coming to numbers three types are available one is integer second one is float third one is complex these are three types of numbers after completion we covered boolean the data type name is bool it has two values either true or false after that we covered string so in this what we discussed in the concept of string we discussed what is a string how to create a string how do we access a particular element the basic things only i already said first i will give you the basic information what is a string how do we access a string how do we create a string how do we access a single character from the string okay these are the things that we had discussed in the last session now coming to today's session anyway remember if you are unable to understand no problem ignore this one why 
again i will cover this topic one more time again i will cover this topic one more time next to one is list next to one is list what is a list list is also a collection of elements list is a collection of elements and the elements are placed within square brackets list is a collection of elements and the elements are placed within square brackets now the thing is here we are creating a string s is equal to welcome dollar co97 whatever it is it consists of either a letters digits special symbols whatever it is within a string you can write anything in the similar fashion list consists of some set of elements and all the elements are of same data type or different data type you can create a list elements of same data type or different data type now go to the list for example l1 is equal to 11 12 13 14 like this some set of elements that are placed within square bracket set of elements placed within square bracket that is called list here l1 is the list check type of l1 so class list here in this example my list consists of only integer elements remember this is not a condition here you can create another list l2 means another list you can give any names based on the rules of identifier for example if i am given l2 dollar is equal to 1 comma 2 see this one it gives an error why dollar it is not allowed based on the rules of identifier you can give any name you can give any name l2 is equal to create a list 11 some 12.3 that is the first one is integer second one is a float suppose 2 plus 3j a complex number and true a boolean value and hello a string now you understand a list can consist of elements of any data type consists of elements of any data type understand two points first of all what is a list list is collection of elements that are enclosed within square bracket and all the elements are separated by commas all the elements are separated by comma now the first two element for example assume a list l1 is created like this now automatically the first two element is stored at index 0. This element is index 1. This is index 2, index 3, index 4. Now you know the logic. L1 of 0. That means similar to string. If you understand the concept of string, exactly same one. If you want to access, that means some set of elements are created. I does not need all the elements. I need only one element. Now, according to L1 of 0, like our movie theater row. For example, in the first row, fifth person. Second row, fifth person. So, this specifies the particular person. That is row number, specific seat. Specific seat. Now, L1 of 0. What is L1? L1 means this one. Under list 1, 0th position is 11. L1 of 3. Under list 1, what is the third position? 0, 1, 2, 3. The answer is 14. The answer is 14. Exactly. You can use the reverse direction. Minus 1. Obviously, what is minus 1? In the reverse direction, 14. This is minus 1. 
minus 2, minus 3 and then minus 4. In the forward direction, we are moving from 0. In the backward direction, we are moving from minus 1. Now, this one. So, coming to L2 of 3. L2 that is under list 2. What is the third position? 0, 1, 2, 3. This is a single element. Now the question is how many number of elements are present in L2? Simply remember the elements are separated by comma. L2 consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This hello is also considered as a single element. Check. L2 of minus 1. Hello. Yes or no? That is the concept of list. Just to, I already given. Just to what is a list? What is a list? Now, based on that one, move to the next data type, tuple. 90% list and tuple both are same. What is a tuple? The set of elements that are placed within parenthesis. Observe the difference. List means set of elements placed within square bracket that is called a list. Tuple means set of elements placed within parenthesis that is called a tuple. We have lot of differences between list and tuple. Right now, I am not discussing any dis difference. P1 is equal to 11, 13, 15. A tuple is created. Check type of P1. How a list is created? In the similar fashion, I created the tuple within parenthesis. Now, T2 is equal to for example, 11, 34.5, hello, true, this one, P2 is also created. That means, whether it is a list or a tuple, it can store some set of elements. All the elements are separated by comma, all the elements are separated by comma, and you can store elements of any data type and if you want to access suppose from t2 if you want to access square bracket whether it is a string or list to tuple whatever it is for accessing single element you need to use square bracket that is index so t2 of 2 what is the meaning under tuple in tuple t2 we are accessing the element at index 2. So, you already know this is the element at index 0, index 1, index 2. Then what is the difference? Anyway, we will discuss later. Lot of differences are there between list and tuple. List and tuple. Now, the next one is set. Next one is set. Set is also some collection of elements like list to and tuple. Set is also collection of elements and the set of elements are separated by comma and the elements are placed within flower brackets. Elements are placed within flower brackets. Now understand the differences. If you are placing the elements in square bracket that is a list. Placing the elements in parenthesis, that is a tuple. Placing the elements in flower bracket, that is called a set. Now, sum L is equal to 11, 12, 13, 11, 14, 12. Now, what is this one? This is a list. Here I am using square bracket. This is a list. Now, L. Whatever you are given, all the elements are printed. Yes or no? All the elements are printed. Now, create a tuple. See this one? All the elements are printed. Finally, create a set flower bracket. Now, yes. Now, observe the output. Based on your observation only, you get the point. 
list means you are whatever the elements you are given all the elements are stored under the list and in the tuple but the set what happened common, common elements in the sense by default by default set removes all duplicate elements remember the most advantage point the main advantage of set is set automatically removes the duplicate elements it is not possible to store duplicate elements inside a set even though you are assigning it does not error see this one 11 and 12 are repeated even though you are given the duplicate elements set automatically remove the element you no need to do anything you no need to do anything now my next two question is you know three questions what is it what is a set how to create a set set me some collection of elements remember not only numbers like list and tuple you can use any data type but the only important thing is it does not contains duplicate element now the main important point how do we access an element from the set observe the point carefully here assume i created a set 1 2 3 1 2 4 2 3 for example this is a set whenever you are assigning this value automatically the duplicates are removed so 1 2 3 4 only this one according to my intention at 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 indexes according to my indexes now what is the value of s of 6 generally what is the value of 6 s of 6 is 2 but originally what set contains 0 1 2 3 only but what about at 6th position no element you understand the point actually i assume that i have a total of 8 elements and the set automatically removes the duplicate elements now i don't know the exact number of elements why here the removal is done automatically that is the reason it is not possible to access an element from the set why in the sense we don't know how many elements are removed how many removed for example now 2 is repeated 3 times one time two time three time which two is removed you assume that all are twos okay two twos are removed which twos the last two or first two or the first and last yes or no we don't know why for example if these two are removed so at first position we have okay very good first position suppose if this one and this one is removed and at the sixth position i have a value to it is not possible to predict the position why set consists of duplicate elements set consists of duplicate elements now finally the last one dictionary the last one dictionary here also elements are placed within flower brackets like such like say elements are placed within flower bracket what is the difference between set and dictionary even though you are using same flower brackets means confusion remember up to now an element is stored as a single value an element is stored as a single value coming to the dictionary an element is stored in the form of pair wise single element pair means two pair means two here each and every single element is represented as a pair what the pair consists of key colon value for example see this one here i am creating a dictionary d open the flower bracket suppose close the flower bracket within this one if you want to play some three or four elements now one colon red 
here comma what is the meaning of this one this is the one element this entire thing is called a single element up to now directly we are given the values for example l is equal to 11 comma 12 comma 13 up to now you are given the values how do we access the values how do we access the values by using indexes yes or no these are the values the values are accessed by using index coming to dictionary so here red is the value 2 colon blue blue is the value not only here 1 and 2 are key syntax key colon value this is my first element comma key colon value my second element comma 3 colon suppose green comma comma 4 colon yellow now you understand that one the keys are not only the numbers the keys are not only the numbers you can write numbers or you can write string you can write anything now obviously for a dictionary there is no concept of index how do we access the value key the key specifies we are accessing the value by using key suppose see this one a dictionary b1 is created one colon red comma two colon blue comma three colon yellow comma four colon pink okay okay okay, okay. Hmm? Okay. So, one colon red. This is my first element. One colon red. This is my first element. One is the key. Red is the value. Comma. Comma. Two colon blue. This is my second element. In this two is key. Blue is value. Comma. Three colon yellow 3 colon yellow 3 is the key and yellow is the value comma 4 colon pink a dictionary is created like this a dictionary is created like this see this one now how do we access a value up to now we are accessing based on index now coming to dictionary we can access based on b1 of what is the 2 here key 2 is key so automatically what is the answer blue exactly blue is the answer understand the difference up to now i am using the concept of index for string list to tuple by using index we are accessing the particular character but coming to dictionary I am using the key. I am using the key. Okay. Now you are in a position to know what are the different data types. Again, I am repeating just to what is what. What is a list? What is a tuple? What is a set? What is a dictionary? What is a string? How to create and how to access. Now, I will show you different types of errors. I will show you different types of errors. Anyway, you have to identify the error. See this one today, up to now I am not using any variable A. Up to now I am not using any variable A. That means up to now A is a variable which does not hold any value. If I press enter, what is the output? Error. Exactly the error name. You need to remember the type of errors. Then only it is very easy. A name is not available understand the name a is not available so error is name error 
based on the error i always prefer to get the errors remember so you have to write a program or learn the concept first you need to identify the errors once you understand the error and you are in a position to rectify those error then only you understand the programming language suppose even though you are writing a program perfectly without any error means that is fine but at the level starting level you need to write the error see this one based on this line you have to get you know one point name a is not defined up to now a is not defined but you are trying to use a for example a is equal to 2 b is equal to 3 c is equal to a plus b but i am not is equal to c is equal to a plus b now c is okay clear the points without initializing any value that gives an error that gives an error what is the error name error okay coming to list coming to list either list to string tuple for the all the three this is one other error 0 1 2 3 4 5 how many elements i have i have total of five elements that, is, that means so total of six elements the first two element is at zeroth position first two position second two position third one fourth one and fifth one l of 5 the answer is 12 okay now l of 6 what is the answer here what is the meaning from the list l you are trying to access an element at index number 6 you are trying to access an element at index 6. Now, is index 6 is available or not available? Not available. So, what is error? Index error. Index error. See this one. List index out of range. That means my range is 0 to 5 only. But you are trying to access an index outside of the range. Okay. Whether it is a list to string or tuple, you are getting index error. Now, D1 of, first print D1. D1 of 5, 2. So, for the key 2, the value blue is displayed. For the key 2, the corresponding value blue is displayed. D1 of 5. Now, key 5 is available or not available? Key 5 is not available. So, obviously, error is? No. Name error means the variable name. Index error means you are trying to access a value that is not at the particular index. Here, the key is not available. The error name is key error. The error name is key error 5. You understand the points? Now, based on this one, Whenever you are getting this error means automatically you go to the dictionary. Okay, 5 key is not available but I am trying to access the key. You need to change whether the program or whether the dictionary. Depending on your requirement you can change the dictionary or you can change this one. Now, so 3 errors. Just now we know 3 errors. So, sorry, 4 errors. One is syntax error. Basic thing. If you forgot, if you are... For example, syntax error. What is mean by syntax error? Any programming language that does not satisfy the conditions of the particular language. So, dollar is not allowed, but I am trying to use dollar. So, it use syntax error. It gives syntax error. Now, name error means the variable that you are trying to use. But up to now, the variable is not existed. Name error. Index error. You are trying to access a value, but the index is out of range. Index error. Key error. You are trying to access a value, but the key is not available. That is called key error. That is called Key error, you need to remember these basic points. You need to remember these basic points that is index error, value error, key error, etc.
okay now my data types introduction is completed my next topic is comments here you know observe everyone is a very very basic topics everyone are the building blocks of python programming everyone building blocks of python programming what is comment simply for example understand today i written a program what happened inside the program i know very well today I know very well. Assume approximately the program consists of some thousand lines of code. For example, my program consists of thousand lines of code. Okay, very good. The program executed successfully. Generally, after one month, I open in my system such type of programs. For example, assume in my system a total of hundred programs are available. So after one month, I open one program. What happened inside the program? I don't know. Yes or no? right now today i remember after one month i forgot what is the program what is going on inside the program everything each and everything you don't know now what you need to do i need to write a comment what is mean by comment the comments are the statements that are understandable for the user for example here i am writing a comment like this this is a program which is used to perform addition of two numbers i written one comment and then i complete the program now the question is why we need comment for user understanding purpose for example i will write down one program okay this is my program addition of two numbers now you know this is addition of two numbers okay after some time i don't know whether this is addition of two numbers or subtraction whatever it is i don't know again what you need to do again you need to check each and every line you need to check each and every line yes or no each and every line so then only okay this is addition instead of that one here before the program i written one comment hash hash is the symbol which is used to write a comment after hash you can write statement read a value i am or else first to write this one addition of two numbers by using this statement you will understand okay this is the program to perform addition of two numbers now hash read first value read first value suppose here i will write hash read second value here hash addition is performed and then print the value and then print the value you observe observe the color comments are just for user understanding comments are not executed remember the point comments are not executed not executed means those are not converted into mission level language just for user understanding now you understand meaning of comment comments are divided into two types one is single line comment second one is multi line comments comments are of two types one is single line comment second one is multi line comment single line comment means you can write any let us any sentences any words but in a single line the single line comment is used the symbol hash remember this one now any one line of code that is written after the hash that is not executed see this one in this this addition of two numbers is not executed read first value is not executed 
read second value is also not executed addition is not executed print the value this is also not executed now you understand my point any statement that is followed by a single flower bracket sorry followed by a single hash hash is the symbol that is called comment what is that one single line comment for example if i want to read more than one line read first value second value see this one observe the color change black color it is not allowed it is not allowed only single line is allowed only single line is allowed now multi line comment means you can place multiple lines within triple quotations you can place comments more than one line of comment within triple quotations okay see this one here 1 2 3 addition of two numbers read first value read second value c is equal to a plus b print c c is equal to a plus b print c now save the program Okay. Now see this one. Here I opened the bracket. I opened the triple quotations, but I forgot to close. Why forgot to close? Then what happened? System treat as ending is not ending is missed. Now if you want to close at this position, one, two, three. One, two, three. Execute, executed successfully. Observe the point. Comments means the statements that are not executable. Those are only for user understanding. Only for user understanding. Okay, this is the comment. Single line comment, multi line comment. Single line comment, and then multi line comment. Okay, clear. The comments is clear. here everything removal is done by system automatically everything is done by python automatically give me one minute okay single line comment and multi line comment anyway you don't know ignore this one not a problem whenever we are moving to the programming automatically you will apply just to remember two symbols hash and quotation okay now comments is completed up to now we completed some basic topics very 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 basic topics under this the most important is identifier oh anyway i will discuss identifier keyword next installation is as usual variable data type data type okay along with comments okay under this five topics any doubt even though you have any doubt these are the basic topics from next time onwards every situation almost you are using this topic now my next to one is my next to one is reading this one you need to follow carefully reading input from the user what is mean by reading input from the user reading input from the user suppose 
see this one i am removing this comments a is equal to 5 b is equal to 6 fixed s or no a value 5 b value 6 if you are executing any number of times the output is 11 only first time execution the output is 11 execute one more time execute in the sense run one more time the output is 11 run one more time the output is 11 every time that is fixed if you want to change what you need to do again move back to the program and then you have to change that is not the correct position that is not the proper way to change now what is my question so now you will get the point what is a program simple thing generally program is set of instructions to perform one activity set of instructions which are used to do one activity now for these instructions you need to provide some information for example if you want to prepare some item for item some ingredients are required exactly for i am my question is you need to write a program to perform addition of two numbers i given the question to you what is my question write a program to perform addition of two numbers okay fine you written the program successfully and i come to your system and execute if i given the values 2 comma 3 answer is 5 if i given the values 3 comma 7 answer is 8 whatever it is so according to my values your program perform the operation not the fixed one you understand my difference not the fixed one whatever the values i given according to the given values the program has to perform for that reading input this 5 6 this a comma b are input input whatever you are given that is called input generally this is called operation that is the processing now what is this one output input that is we are given perform some operation produces something output reading input from the user or sometimes they are called as reading input from the keyboard what is the meaning of this one means read the information at the time of execution okay for that python uses a function input remember this one python uses a function input suppose a is equal to a is equal to input of a is equal to input of b is equal to input of now i will change this program a is equal to input of observe carefully here if you understand this one only we are can move to further otherwise it is not possible to move on right that is this is the starting point yes or no if you want to write a program identify row all those are basic things if you want to write a program first step is you need to provide the input you have to know how do we provide the input so a is equal to input of whenever this statement is executed what happened the system asked the user please enter one value whatever the value we entered that is stored under a now completed and whenever this statement is executed again system ask the user please enter some one value whatever the value you entered that is stored in b now print a plus b directly i write a plus b or else you can write c is equal to a plus b print c both are same or not now you understand again each and every basic is important so my intention is you don't know anything so first a is equal to input of b is equal to input of c is equal to a plus b print c this is my program first whenever this statement is executed 
you are allowed to enter one value suppose i entered some value 3 automatically 3 is stored in a now next this statement is executed yes or no line by line execution this statement is executed i entered some value b sorry 4 the 4 is assigned to b here the operation is performed right now this is not my concept yes or no right now my concept is only input now check whether executed successfully here first write c is equal to a plus b and then write c now you understand both are same or not here wastage of one variable instead of that directly you can use in the print anyway these two only these two execute See the cursor blinking? That means at this you need to enter some value, some 3. Again cursor blinking. That is second value. Suppose 4. Now ignore the answer. Answer right or wrong? That is not my case. So 3 is stored in A. 4 is stored in B. Okay sir. Here the thing is I don't know what you do. For example, I don't know whether you have to enter an integer value or a float value or a variable or b variable for that the input function is written in this format input of prompt what is mean by prompt prompt means a message that is to be displayed at the time of execution anyway see this one enter a value remember always here you can use any situation you can use either single quotations or double quotation both are same now see this one enter b value now execute see this one it asks enter a value now you understand even though you are not writing the program executed successfully if you want you can write if you are not interested, simply ignore the prompt. 3, enter B value 4. Now, these two are clear. Two are clear. The prompt is your wish. If you want, you can write. Now, coming to the logic. Here I entered 3, comma 4. Actually, my answer is 7. But the output is displayed as 3, 4. Yes or no? <coughs> For that, I will show you one more point. Directly go to IDLE. Suppose D is equal to input of. Press enter. It has some value. Suppose I given some value 5. Now type of D. Now what D consists of? D consists of 5. Which data type? 5 is which data type? Integer data type. But remember, by default, default means even though you are not providing anything, system takes the default value. By default, the input function takes only string. The input function takes only string. So, according to your intention, 3 is an integer. But remember, if you, in your point of view, 3 is an integer. In system point of view, you are reading the information by using input. Even though it is a 3, but this is not an integer 3. This is a string 3. Already I said string means anything within quotation. For example, before executing this one, S is equal to 1, 2, 3. Now type of S. S is integer or string? Integer or string? Integer. String. Here you written 1, 2, 3 in quotation. Observe the point. Whether it is a letter or a digit or a symbol. Whatever it is. I does not care about anything. My intention is only I need to check whether the things are placed within quotation or not now see this one type of a c string similarly type of d is equal to string only you got my point why 
even though it looks like an integer it looks like an integer but the input function by default takes everything as a string if you have any doubt print d observe where 5 is placed within quotation uh, clear now suppose s is equal to hello this is one string s1 is equal to good this is another string for example i created two strings s comma s1 s plus s1 here i am performing addition between two strings generally it is possible or not possible generally additions are performed between numbers but here i am trying to perform addition between two strings it is possible the addition meaning is the addition meaning is not addition concatenation this is a technical term concatenation in the anyway in the string concept we will discuss everything for our understanding only i will explain right now concatenation means combining the two string now see the output hello good hello good based on this one you understand first i entered one value a that is 3 which data type string 4 which data type string a plus b means 3 is a string 4 is a string both are clubbed together that is the reason the answer is 3 4 now clear everything now what is the important point the first point is how do you read input from the user by using input of function which is used to take input from the user first one clear now at the time of execution that is at the time of given some values if you want any message please enter this value this value this value you can write prompt within quotation whatever you written within quotation that is displayed just for my understanding only now by default the input function takes string only by default default input takes strings only obviously what is my next question what is my next question sir i want to perform addition of two integers by use taking the information that is data from the user data from the user means you need to use input function but the input function takes string only what i required i need integer how understand the point for example I am always providing string value, but you want integer value. You want integer value. For example, charging point. So, connector is there. Connector. What is the purpose of connector? Converting one portability into another. Exactly. Here also, what is the point? String is converted into integer. This is my aim. I want to perform addition of two integers. My aim is string is converted into integer. Suppose if you want float, string is to be converted into float like this. What is the procedure is simply A is equal to, remember this syntax, A is equal to input of enter a value this is the normal first what is executed first this thing is executed so automatically that is displayed after that one input of it is executed whenever this is executed you are entered some value now whatever the value observe my brackets whatever the value i entered so which data type this is string data type here you are writing int of int of automatically the string is converted into integer i will show you practically suppose a is equal to or already i have a string suppose create a string s is equal to 123 
S is equal to 123. A is equal to int of S. Int of S. So, int means anything that is placed inside is converted into an integer. Now, 123 string is converted into integer that is stored in A. Now, see the value of A 123 without quotation. Without quotation. Suppose B is equal to float of S. Now, B 123.0 without quotation. Clear the point? Now, based on this one, how do I write the program? If you want to take integer value, int of. Yes or no? Int of. Automatically, whatever the value I entered, that is converted into integer. That is converted into integer. Save and execute. Enter a value 3. Enter a value 4. 3 plus 4, 7. Now clear? Reading input from the user, even though small topic, but lot of topic. One important question. S is a string. Okay, where S is not available. Okay. For example, S is equal to hello. Now, A is equal to int of S. What is the value here? What is the value of A? Understand carefully what is the value of A? Anyone in the online also can ping the message. So observe carefully. Integer means a number. Hello means a character. Is it possible to convert? No. Remember, even though I said one word, int of means anything is converted into integer. But the string must be in the form of digits only. Suppose even though you are using 123 as a string, not a problem. Why? Even though that is a string, but it consists of only digits. But see this one, another error. What is another error? Value error, invalid literal for int with base 10. So that means for integer, for integer we need to pass in base 10 means, base 10 means my decimal numbers. That means you need to pass decimal numbers, but here you are passing hello. It is not possible, even though for this program also. See, F5, enter A value, suppose hi. Now understand one point carefully. Hi, press enter. It gives some error. It given some error. Yes or no? Execute one more time. Enter A value 3. Press hi. It gives an error. Now you observe anything. In the first class, I used one word. Everything is converted into mission level language. Two types of conversions. One is compiler. At a time the program converts the entire. Another one is interpreter line by line. See this one. First line one is converted. That is line one is executed. Here I given the wrong information. Yes or no? That is the reason automatically it displays the error and stop the conversion. In the second time, first I entered the correct value, executed successfully. And in the second line, I given the wrong information, stop. Now you understand? Now, what is the future? That future is called Python is interpreted. Right now, you know four features. Python is simple. Python is open source. Python is a dynamically typed language and then Python is interpreted language. And one more, Python is interactive. Yes or no? This is an interactive mode, interactive. Clear the points? That means no need to buy hard the feature. That is the reason only in the starting session I did not give any information related to features. Now, one thing is completed. 
so the demos are over this is my first point input is completed any doubt related to reading the input once you understand in the next session i am moving into output only one way of reading the input that is a blind procedure only one way of reading the input for displaying the output we have many number of ways many many number of ways displaying the output in between what is available processing here this processing depends on your logic and your knowledge only yes or no here what it is how to read the input how to produces the output and here the logic is completely your idea for example i given a program the program is to find area of a circle area of a circle what is the input to the program suppose i will write down the program program is area of a circle what is the input first you need to read the radius yes or no radius suppose r is equal to assume the radius is float your wish input of enter radius so for this any doubt i already explained how to read the input now if you know the formula of area that is processing area is equal to 3.14 into r into r pi r square formula now print area so if my radius is some 3.2 this is the now this is completed this is depends on you and here i will show you here what happened simply the answer is displayed simply the answer is displayed now i does not need the only answer i need the the area of a circle is i need to print the message suppose again the area of a circle with radius 3.2 is that is different formats we will discuss different ways of displaying the output in the next session clearly speaking today session what we discussed we discussed the data type list to tuple string set and of dictionary after that how to read input from the user anyway in the next session we are moving reading output reading output and we will get the complete idea and then we will move to the program so value error invalid literal for int with base and hello exactly that is an error yes. now any doubts related to the topics up to now whatever we discussed up to now day one onwards any doubts please ask me in the last session i entered into python programming there the basic points what we discussed what is an identifier briefly i will explain in 5 minutes what is an identifier identifier is simply a name given to either a variable already we discussed the concept of variable so a variable or a method or a function or a class or object whatever it is in a python programming at any place if you want to use a name all the names are given by identifier now identifier follows some rules identifier follows some rules based on the rules only you have to give the name what are the rules an identifier contains alphabets a to z either lower case or upper case first to remember the lower case is different from upper case and an identifier consists of the combination digits 0 to 9 and only one special character underscore so these are the things that are allowed inside an identifier now one important rule you need to remember is an identifier does not starts with a digit does not starts with a digit okay and one more important point is an identifier is not a keyword 
and there is no limit on the length of identifier anyway we will discuss all these things clearly in the last session this is my first topic in the last session immediately i am moving to the topic of keywords so here i used one word identifiers are not used as a keyword first of all what is keyword keyword means simply reserved word keyword means simply reserved word reserved word means at the time of a language development some words are reserved for some specific purpose so they have to use only that purpose only we are not allowed to use an identifier in python we have a total of 33 keywords okay along with what we discussed how to install ide okay so the first step is the installation is completed after the installation the two ways of writing the program one is you are writing the program in interactive mode second one is we are writing the program under script mode there are two modes for writing the program okay so these things along with this finally we covered the concept of variable we covered the concept of variable so what is mean by variable simple difference a memory location a memory location that will hold a value that will hold a value for example a is equal to 3 b is equal to 4 after this i used two statements one is single value assigned to multiple variables single value assigned to multiple variables a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to 2 one value to multiple variables another one is in a single line in a single line if you are writing multiple lines not a problem suppose multiple lines in the sense a is equal to 2 b is equal to 2 c is equal to 2 not a problem but in a single line also it is possible the very important thing is multiple variables with multiple values also possible in a single line multiple variable suppose a comma b comma c is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 so three variables three values One is assigned to A, two is assigned to B, three is assigned to C, and finally we discussed one function. The function is ID of ID. What is the use of function to get the address in which memory location the particular variable is stored? So these are the basic things that we had covered in the last session. Now. coming to today session in the today session our concept is our data type in the last session only i used the word data type the name specify data means my information type so what is a type so type in the sense coming to mathematics not the programming language general mathematics a is a variable a is equal to 3 now generally these are called whole numbers in mathematical point of view this is called whole number suppose b is equal to 4.3 this is called real numbers mathematics point of view this is called real numbers suppose c is equal to 2 plus 3j these are called complex numbers yes or no that means data type specify the type of information stored in a variable the type of information stored in a variable you observe carefully here up to now i am not explaining the features of python up to now i explained only one feature 
that is python is simple and easy to learn how can you say that by one program welcome program compared to c and java python is very simple to write the program so you know because of that one i said python is the simple language and one more future you already know one more future one more future is open source that means you install the python software without paying any money directly download from the internet and we can install that is open now one very 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 important future is dynamic type dynamically typed language python is a dynamically typed language typed comes under the concept of data type what is mean by dynamically typed directly it is not possible move to any other language for example i am moving into some c language in c language i will write the program then convert it to python you will understand in c language suppose my program is sum of two numbers assume my program is sum of two numbers how to write a program first hash include stdio.h void main int what is int first i will give you the meaning generally this whole numbers is the mathematical term technically the whole numbers are called integers remember mathematically whole numbers technically those are called integers mathematical point of view real numbers technically that is programming point of view those are called float remember the two words int is a data type which specify whole numbers float is also a data type which also specify data type now int a comma b comma c int a comma b comma c you don't know c language no problem scan of percentage d percentage d m person a comma m person b now c is equal to a plus b print f print f percentage b comma c close this one this is the simple c program addition of two numbers why i written the program is understand carefully except to python in the remaining programming languages if you want to this is my concept yes or no what is my program addition of two numbers the two numbers are a comma b before performing the addition not only addition before using the variable first at that first whenever you enter into the main you need to declare this is called declaration statement remember before usage of the variable first you need to declare the variable you need to declare the variable what is mean by the declaration it specifies a is the variable which is going to use in your program and this variable a some memory is allocated in the program and that variable a hold only integer value this meaning is available again i am repeating so before using any variable the first important thing is you need to declare the variable what the declaration specify the syntax of declaration is data type integer float anything so the type of data stored under the variable the type of data stored under the variable a now the type of data stored under b under c is fixed now this is the line which is used to enter some value what is the value of a and what is the value of b to read the values from the user 
సపోజ్ ఇఫ్ ఐ ఎంటెడ్ ఏ వాల్యూ టు ఆటోమేటికల్ ఇంటర్నల్ లాజిక్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ సో ఏ హోల్ సే వాల్యూ టు బి హోల్ సే వాల్యూ త్రీ ఫైవ్ ద ఎడిషన్ ఈస్ పర్ఫార్మ్డ్ ఫైవ్ ఈ స్టోర్ ఇన్ ఆన్సర్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటెడ్ సక్సెస్ఫుల్లీ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇఫ్ ఐ ఎంటెడ్ ఏ వాల్యూ యాజ్ సమ్ టూ పాయింట్ త్రీ ఏ వాల్యూ యాజ్ టూ పాయింట్ త్రీ బి ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు త్రీ నౌ వాట్ ఈస్ ద ఆన్సర్ a is equal to 2.3 b is equal to 3 according to our expectation the answer is 5.3 remember it gives an error why means i already declared a is an integer it must and should use whole numbers but you are trying to assign a real number it is not possible now you understand the point that means static type type statically type means before usage first we have to declare and it can store values only of that data type values of only the data type if you are given any other type of information it gives an error okay coming to python in python this statement is not required this statement is not required for example a is equal to 5 b is equal to 3 whenever you want a variable c is equal to a plus b you can just declare with some value now what is the value of c h what is the value of c h suppose a is equal to 5.3 what is the value of c 8.3 that means how what is the data type here in python no need to declare the variable in advance whatever the value you are providing the variable becomes the data type automatically in the previous example c is an integer why we are given c is equal to 8 c is an integer suppose c is equal to 8.3 c becomes a float value you no need to do anything everything is done automatically that is the best future why suppose if you declare everything in advance if i want to change here you go back to this one and you need to change the things okay now coming to the concept i not entered into the concept coming to the concept of data type right now you understand one point data type specifies the type of information stored in a variable now the what is the point python is dynamically typed language this is one of the important interview question what is mean by dynamically typed language dynamically typed means no need to declare the variable in advance whenever you required any variable directly you can use the variable suppose in the previous program i declared the variable int a comma b comma c suppose in the program i am trying to use a variable d it gives an error that means without declaration you are trying to use but in python no need of that statement whenever you want any variable with value you can use okay now the data types are categorized into different types the first one is numbers boolean and these are the two primitive primitive means compulsory or primitive means a basic without this one the next two data types are not available so two primitive data types are available one is numbers and another one is boolean so first i will move to numbers i will write down the remaining things anyway so next one is string list tuple dictionary set and then frozen set that is sub part of set is available these are some advanced data types or non primitive data types 
what is the difference between the term primitive and non primitive so primitive data type means a variable hold a value variable hold a value non primitive data type means a variable will hold object reference right now you don't know anything about object yes or no that is the reason right now you don't have the term object just to remember the term data type whenever i am moving to object oriented programming then you will understand clearly first coming to numbers remember right now i will explain the numbers and boolean in detail now these remaining string list to tuple dictionary set to i will give you a brief idea what is what just what is a string how to create a string what is a list how to create a string just to i given a brief idea approximately after 7 to 8 classes approximately after some set of class number of classes again i will move back to this concept and each and everything we will discuss in detail why if you want to get the concept of string you need to understand the concept of operators you need to get the concept of decision making looping statements branching statements so most of the basic things are required but one important point if you understand the concept of a loop you need to know these terms generally a programming language means it depends on each and everything which one is the first which one is the next one it is a very difficult to predict so that is a reason first i will give you a brief idea after that i will move to the another topic again i will come back and then go in depth first numbers the name specify data type means the type here my information is in the form of numbers my information is in the form of numbers information this is my data these numbers are categorized into three types the numbers are categorized into three types one integer integer is for understanding purpose int is the data type the data type name is int so which is used to store whole numbers int is used to store whole numbers next to float float is used to store real numbers next to one complex complex is used to store complex numbers only these three are the data types remember into flow to complex these three are the data types integer numbers floating numbers and complex numbers complex numbers okay what is cross sir anyway i will explain see step by step first integer number a is equal to some three here you need to observe one point i am not declaring up to now i am not declaring directly i am using the variable a is equal to 3 here in this example 3 is a whole number what is mean by whole number a number without any decimal points according to mathematics only a number without any decimal points those are called whole numbers the technical term of whole number is integer see this one b is equal to 4 without declaration directly i am using c is equal to a plus b now what is the value of c 7 all these are integers how do we know for that we have a predefined function the function name is type of remember the function type of is the function which gives the type of the data type type of is the function which gives the type of the data type now type of the data type in the sense the type of the variable p y p e type of a now a consists of which value integer press enter see this one class int type of 
D class int. Here, what is this mean by this class? Object oriented programming. Right now, you know the basic point int. Satisfied? A is integer, B is an integer. Now, for example, x is equal to 2.3. Actually, what is 2.3? A real number. A number with some decimal point. A number with some decimal point are called real numbers. In technical aspects, the real numbers are called float. Real numbers are called float. Clear? Clear? So, real numbers are called float number. X is equal to 2.3 type of X. Automatically, the answer is float. The answer is float. Okay? Now, for example, a variable Y is equal to 0. 0000012 type of y what is the type now observe here type of object yes or no generally everything is treated as an object but right now you don't know the term object that is the reason i am ignoring type of y see this one float Zero point if a number consists of one decimal point, the value is considered as a flow data type. Now see this one here. I am using a c consists of seven. If I print seven, sorry, sorry. If I print c, the value in c is displayed. Suppose x, suppose x. What is the value of x? Two point three is displayed. But why consists of this value? If I am trying to display my value is changed. You observe the thing. What is that one? Remember, in scientific applications, generally, logically. So are we are using this such type of numbers? Generally, for our regular calculations, we are not using this type of numbers in Scientific applications of floating points are represented in terms of exponents. In terms of exponents. Meaning is, for example, 1.2 e sum 10. This is the representation. 1.2 e 10. Internally, what is the meaning? 1.2 into, for example, assume some 7, whatever it is, 1.2 into 10 power 7. That means E specifies 10. Here this one is the power, 1.2 into 10 power 7. Now, what is my number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros. 0 0.1234567880 zeros. Instead of writing this number, for example, 1.2e minus 9. Minus 9 in the sense, what is the meaning? 1.2 into 10 power minus 9. 10 power minus 9. So, we are getting the number. So, already one D number is there after now total 10 digits. See this one? Observe the count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the representation. Whether it is right or wrong, you need to remember the syntax. If you have a number like this, you can represent in exponent format. Anyway, anyway you no need to remember 99.99 .99 situations. You are not allowed to do this one. Why? System automatically converts. Yes or no? Here I am not converting. Here consider this example. I am not doing any operation. System automatically converts. So no need to remember. Here everything is done by the system only. Now two numbers are completed. One is integer. 
second one is floating coming to third one complex this is also according to mathematics if any number is of the form a plus bj even though the class is very slow no problem why you know that one the first two sessions are basic if you are very perfect about basics the remaining things are very easy okay if a number is of the form a plus bj then the numbers are called complex numbers and you know that one here a is called real part yes or no in the numbers according to mathematics a is called real part b is called imaginary part b is called imaginary part now write down one example some c is equal to 2 plus 3j now what is the type of c complex see this one c is equal to you assume that sir previously c is equal to 7 now c is equal to 2 plus 3j override this is a dynamically typed for example in c language it gives an error why c holds only integer value if you are trying to give any other than integer it gives an error but in python no problem here i am given an integer i updated into complex it can takes the complex also now type of c complex a plus b j j is the fixed if you want to change j to k j to l it gives an error why this is a predefined format i am not doing anything this is a fixed and predefined format now one next two point is if you want to get only the real part or only the imaginary part you got my point my point is i am i does not need the entire complex number i need only the real part you can access like this under the variable c dot r e a l it gives only the real value but remember even though you have two comma three what type of numbers integers even though integers the output is in float 2.0 here everything is predefined if it is a float number automatically the answer is float even though it is an integer even though it is an integer the output is a floating value the output is the floating value c dot real c dot imag imaginary part 3.0 this is the complex number clear the point now first to data type is completed numbers under numbers we are discussed integer which is used to store whole numbers float for real numbers and complex for complex type of numbers any doubts related to this numbers any doubts related to this one okay now i am moving into the next data type what is my next data type boolean boolean is my next data type so here the data type name is boolean but originally the type name is b o o l only boolean is the sentence word the data type name is bool up to now i am using integer floating but what is the data type int only floating the data type name is float similarly boolean the data type name is bool remember this boolean data type consists of only two values fixed the boolean data type consists of only two values the two values are one is true second one is false the two values are one is true second one is false that means we are checking some condition 
uh, coming to mathematics suppose 3 greater than 2 3 greater than 2 what is the output right or wrong actually that is right so in this case the output is displayed as true suppose 3 less than 2 in this case the output is displayed as false generally while checking the conditions at the time of condition checking we are using boolean based on that one if the condition is true we are doing one operation if the condition is false we are doing another operation in the type of situation only we are using p r u e remember capital t that is a very very important this true is a keyword true is a keyword a is equal to true type of a is this one b o o l bool for example c is equal to 3 greater than 2 executed successfully now what is c c is one true yes or no first to 3 greater than 2 is performed condition is evaluated after evaluating the condition the result is true now c hold the value of true type of c this is a boolean okay for example c is equal to 3 less than 2 now c is false f is capital remember why i specified mean python exactly the same boolean is available in java also in java there we are using lower case letters true and false but in python true and false these are keywords what is a keyword reserved words we have to use as it is how it is available you have to use in the same fashion so for example see this one d is equal to true i am using lower case it gives an error what is the error name true is not defined so what is this name error anyway after completion of this class you will get different types of errors name error value error index error key error wait for this class only after that you will identify different types of errors why the concept of data types only gives the errors now so the primitive data types is completed the primitive data types are completed number and then boolean anyway whenever we are moving to the advanced level we will come back again next one is string i already said just to what is the meaning how to create only what is the meaning how to create so string string is a group of characters a group of characters or a sequence of characters or a collection of characters that are enclosed within quotations a group of characters that are enclosed within quotations that is called a string that is called a string now what is a string clear a group of characters enclosed within quotation that is called a string here the next one is how to create first for each and every one i am using the same topic for string list tuple dictionary set to the same topic what is the definition string is a group of characters that are placed within quotation next one is how to create for example s1 is equal to this is the name of the string this is the name of the string s1 is equal to welcome to python within single quotation here automatically a string is created like previous example see this one a is equal to 3 what happened a variable is created which holds a value 3 here also 
a string s1 is created which consists of a value welcome to python not only this one you can give any message but the entire thing is placed within single quotation this is the first way second create another string s2 is equal to double quotation welcome to some java double quotation this is also one way that means you can create the string by using single quotation or by using double quotation no problem both are same in python in python why i am using python why in the remaining programming languages it is different in the remaining programming languages only double quotations are allowed in the single quotation for example c c plus plus java in the, that languages in the single quotation we are representing the single character except to python in the remaining programming language single quotations are used for storing the character for storing the character but coming to python you can use the single quotation for string now obviously what is question how the characters are stored yes or no suppose i have a single character how the character is stored remember python does not have a character data type c c++ java all the languages consists of character data type python does not consists of character data type python consists of string only any way i will show you the creation first s1 is equal to welcome to python you observe so not only let us you can use anything for example welcome to python 99 here i am using dollar symbol here i am using some ampersand whatever it is the thing is quotations open quotation you can write anything your wish close the quotation automatically that is a string a string is created yes or no type of s1 str str string data type s1 means c whatever you are created exactly that is printed the step one is clear now create the string by using double quotation double quotation so welcome to welcome to python now type of s2 here it is also string print s2 remember you observe even though you are using double quotation system takes down the format of single only whether it is a single or double not a problem according to your requirement you can give anything what is the requirement sir i always use it single quotation or i always use it double quotation why you need to change suppose my question is you need to create a string for example i don't know python this is my string suppose s3 is equal to i don't know python you observe my term i don't know python if you are using single quotation like this clear now what happened observe parallelly here i will type s3 is equal to open the single quotation i don't whatever it is spelling i'm sorry don't no python now observe the color changes previously the entire string is stored in under sub green color here i d o n you understand this is considered as the opening one and this will be considered as the closing one now what about this one it gives an error 
unterminated string literal now in this case what you need to do s3 is equal to use double quotation any problem use double quotation so why opening double quotation means system checks for closing double quotation even though we have single quotation system will not does not consider the single quotation does not consider the single quotation clear the point so that is the reason we have two ways not only three ways two ways you have another way also that means triple quotations right now i am not discussing anything why right now what is your point what is a string how to create by using single quotation and by using double quotation okay clear now third point for every concept i will discuss three points third point accessing what is mean by accessing accessing before that one i will show you one thing i forgot id for everything you need to check id of s1 so this is the address of string 1 id of s2 this is the address of string 2 anyway after completion of all the data types i will show id one more time why because for example a is equal to 3 id of a okay b is equal to 3 b is a same variable or another variable a and b both are different variables now id of b same address or different address yeah. different variable same address why i will explain later now what is the question accessing just now i discussed what is a string how to create a string the next one is how do we access a particular character for example assume my string is welcome for simplicity i am creating a string welcome remember how a string is stored inside the memory previously i given one definition string is a group of characters or a collection of characters or a sequence of characters remember everything is stored in the form of a sequence according to according to indexes remember the word index index so w for example this is the memory location this is the memory location this location is referred by s yes. you generally we assume directly the welcome is stored like this yes or no general but this is not true directly the string is not stored like this how the string is stored letter by letter internal representation blindly the string is not stored letter by letter this is the first position that is zeroth position first 2 3 4 5 6 those are called indexes those are called indexes 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 now if you print s yes, what is the output if we print s yes, the welcome entire string is displayed entire string is displayed now i want only the letter at the position 2 you got my point i want only the letter at position number 2 how simply under string s on what string under string s s of index here s means the name of the string under the string we are retrieving only a single character we are retrieving only a single character suppose first i create a string welcome s of 0 press enter automatically it returns the character at zeroth position suppose s of 5 it returns the character at fifth position what is the character 0 1 2 3 4 5 
At the fifth position, we have a letter N. Okay. Half point is completed. Under accessing, two points are there. One point is completed. How the elements, in which direction we are accessing? Exactly. That is very important. We are accessing in the left to right direction. Generally called as forward direction. Whatever I discussed up to now, this is available in C, C++, Java and in Python. Okay. Why Python? Observe for each and every case, Python have additional features. So, Python have an additional point also. We can move or we can access the characters in the backward direction also. Backward direction also. How? The positions are generally this is called positive indexes. General assumption. 0 is considered as a positive. That is the reason total how many letters I have? Total 7. 0 to 6. Here reverse direction means E is stored at the position minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7. Okay. In the reverse direction. So, if you are given S of minus 2. Simply, it returns the index or character at minus 2 position. Why this positive and negative? Depending upon the program. For example, I have a program such that you need to access before last character. Before last character, how? First step, if you don't know this concept, you don't know this concept, first I need to count how many number of characters. Total, I have 7 characters. Total 7 in the sense, the first thing is 0 and the last one is 6. Before the last one, that means S of 5. This procedure. Suppose, even though you don't know anything, before the last one means simply you know the last one is minus 1. S of minus 2 automatically you are getting the answer. You understand my point? So, in some situations it is possible to access in the reverse direction. Anyway, whenever you are moving in depth, you will get the point. This is the position of minus 2. Now, string is completed. What is a string? How to create a string? How do we access? Okay. Before coming to the list, I will move to the list topic later. And one more information. So, from tomorrow onwards, the link is changed. Everyone observe. From tomorrow onwards, the link is changed. Okay. So, only three days. That is four, five and six. Only three, three days are the demo sections. From tomorrow onwards, link is changed only. The link is shared to the students who paid the fee. This is the information from the management. Okay. Anyway, coming to the point. Here, previously, I will cover the list to tuple later. Anyway, within 10 minutes, that is not completed. Coming to one point. A is equal to 5. B is equal to 5. You observe one thing. Both have same addresses. Why? This is one of the advantage of Python. I will show you step by step. See, A is equal to 5. ID of A. Actually, what happened? Right now, no memory. Empty. Nothing is available. Right now, nothing is available. Okay. Whenever you are trying to create the variable a is equal to 5, system checks whether any variable is existed with a value 5 or not. Within the memory, is any location is existed, existed with a value 5 or not. Up to now, anything is existed? No. So, if now value 5 is not existed, it creates a value and refer to A. Now, based on the same point, B is equal to 5. 
b is equal to 5 what happened again system do the same thing che any memory location is existed with a value 5 or not yes 5 is existed simply use this reference why you know the advantage why no wastage of memory is reduced if you want another location some memory is required so whether a or b both are different variables but the value is same for example if you are trying to change the value b into 4 then automatically creates another memory if up to now if you are using same value means same memory location that is the reason you are getting the address of b also same okay first point i will give you three points second point suppose x is equal to 2.3 y is equal to 2.3 both are same or not now check id of x this is the address where x is stored id of y this is the address where y is stored same or not different remember here this is integer this one is float for floating values system does not consider this scenario floating values different memory locations anyway i will give you one more point s1 is equal to create a string welcome id of s1 okay this is the address s2 is equal to create a string welcome id of s2 same or not same now remember three points only three points one is the string string if multiple string consists of same value they are stored in the same memory that is more than one refers to the same location but floating it is not possible you assume you understand that for integers it is possible yes or no but see one more point x is equal to some 512 y is equal to some 512 now id of x id of 5 512 is an integer same or not different but according to previous discretion, same. Here x and y both consist of same values but different addresses. Multiple means? No. Here the thing is, I will show you. x is equal to 257. Why I am using the same letters means I will explain. x is equal to 257. y is equal to 257. Now check id of x, id of y, same or different, different, even though integer, multiple integer, same value, but it moves to different location. Finally, last point, x is equal to 256, y is equal to 256, id of x, now id of 5 now check both are same now based on all these examples you will get one point what is that one up to the value 256 only the integer is supported remember one more point suppose in some versions in some versions up to 512 is also available why 256 and 512 only Powers of 2, 2 power 7, 2 power 8, 2 power 9, binary representation. Suppose integer is the data type. Assume it allocates how much amount of memory? 2 bytes of memory. Anyway, we will discuss this memory later. Suppose 2 bytes of memory. The memory is in the form of binary. Yes or no? Why everything in the first class, whatever we are created, a is equal to 5. How the system stored? System not stored 5. System stored in terms of binary 101. For storing, it requires some memory. 
for storing it needs some memory up to 256 only the integers are supported okay now string is supported coming to list to tuple whatever it is we will discuss in the next session now what is the today's session first give the conclusion data types under this data types the first one is numbers the first one is numbers under this numbers we discuss integer float complex after that boolean and after that string or ng string along with right now we discussed one function type is the one function and one is address or address comparison just for understanding idea of is the function so it is different to different data types different to different data types now any doubts any doubts so again i am repeating from tomorrow onwards the link is changed okay if you have doubt you can unmute yourself and ask the doubts uh, so left to right means suppose see this example s is equal to welcome so by default 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so right to left suppose according to your indication here also you are given 0 means now s of 0 what is the answer e r w you understand my point so in the left to right direction i am using positive indexes in the right to left direction i am using negative indexes to provide the separation for example okay anything 0 1 2 3 i written like this what is s of 0 it is not possible by using single index we can extract only single value yes now any others okay clear